I'll take you through a full portrait retouching tutorial in Photoshop. I'll be using my frequency separation and dodge and burn actions. I'm putting together all my Photoshop actions so I can share with you guys sometime soon. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to share this raw file with you to practice with. And I'll do so once this video gets 1000 views and beyond. Kindly like this video and share it with people who may benefit from it. And if you're new here or you haven't subscribed yet, kindly subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified anytime I upload a new video. This is the retouched image and this is the raw. So retouched raw. So this is what we are aiming at. And this is where we are starting from. So I'll go ahead and delete the edited one so we can start from here. Welcome back to Ghanaian Photography. My name is Don Alabi. This image has been raw processed in Capture One already. First thing we'll do here is to work on the background. Uh, if we zoom in here, you realize the background has some few blemishes and some folds to be taken care of. So the first thing will be to get a background cleaned. There are different ways of doing that. I have a tutorial on how to comprehensively clean your backdrop. So I'll add a card up there so you can check it out. First thing I want to do is separate my subject from the background so I'll be able to work on the background. I make use of the magic wand. You can use any other selection tool that works for you. So select subject using the magic wand and it has beautifully selected my subject for me. So I'll just uh, duplicate this, command J, and then command and click on this to select it. We move to the background, invert the selection, and then duplicate it. So now we have our subject here and then we have our background here. Now let's select our background and then go to filter, uh, blur and Gaussian blur. I'll leave it at 30 for the radius and then OK. So what that does is to blur the background first so that any creases or folds will be taken care of. You can play around the radius or as I said you can use any other method to clean the background. So what I normally do here is create a mask around this. Use a soft brush at a low flow and um, black so I can hide parts of her skin that I don't want to be part of the blurring. Then the final thing here is to merge all these layers back as one. Now we have our background worked on. So we'll move to the next thing, which is blemish remover. For blemish remover, I create a new layer, name it blemish remover. And then I pick the spot healing brush with proximity set. And I zoom in to 100% and then start taking out blemishes one after the other. All right, we are done with blemish removal. So we'll move to the next thing, which is frequency separation. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be using my frequency separation action. So we go to the action set, and this is the version two of my frequency separation using median. So we click on it, continue, and then we select the radius for the median. Now this depends on the kind of image you're retouching and then your settings for the mixer brush. So what works for me might not work for you. And then for me also, for various images, I have a different setting for the radius. For this one, I'll choose 10 and then click OK. So we have our frequency separation done here. And if you use my action, you 
automatically select the mixer brush for you and then input the settings that I use, which is 30, 30, 30, and 25. How I got these settings, I don't know. I can't remember, but that's what works for me. So you can play around yours and then see what works best for you. With the way I go about my frequency separation, I disable the texture layer and then work on the color layer. So once you are set, you just start brushing using the mixer brush. Okay, once you're done with brushing, I enable the texture layer again. Then I zoom in to 100%. And on the texture layer, I use the clone stamp to, to take off some of the blemishes that I couldn't take off in the first process. So with this, you sample an area and then brush over where the blemish is so to sample you press and hold option and then you click release the option and then you brush over all right so don't forget to save your work once in a while so that in case um, you get power outage or your stem has to restart out of the blues you won't lose your progress so we are okay with the second um, process of blemish removal so the next thing we'll do is global dodge and burn for that also i have an action over here so it's played it here now i don't want it to remain in here so i'll just take it out of the FS folder and then expand it so we have dodge and then burn so we'll select our dodge and then select our brush tool and I prefer using a very low flow so I use 2% 2% because I want the build up to be gradual then don't forget to change your brush color to white because the mask is black so over here you know what dodge does so dodge is to uh, pronounce the highlights so let's go over the highlights and then brush over them now i'm doing this moderately because i don't want to overdo it that's the more reason why i'm using a low flow for the brush so I'll have to brush over and over several times to get the kind of effects I want without messing the image up. Don't forget, this is just global dodge and burn. Okay, let's do a quick before and now. So let's go to burn and then work on the contours, the dark areas. Okay, let's take a look at the full image and then let's do a quick before dodge and burn, after dodge and burn. So let's go back to the beginning. This is before frequency separation. So this frequency separation, and then dodge and burn. So if you want to see the areas that you've dodged or burned, just uh, press and hold option on your keyboard and then click. So this shows where we've burned. And then this shows where we've dot. If you want to get out of it, you press option again and then click and that will bring you out of it. That's a quick way for you to know exactly what you're doing. So here we are, our image well retouched within this short time. Now, if you want to add certain things to it, no problem. For instance, this image is already sharp. If we zoom in, realize the texture, everything is there. But just because we've done frequency separation, 
I sometimes duplicate my texture layer, then I change the blending mode to soft light, or I just leave it as it is and then reduce the opacity. If you've made it this far, I'm sure you're really learning a lot from this video. Don't forget to like the video and share it with someone who may benefit from it. If you look at this image, see here there is uh, some skin coming out of the dress. So we can leave it like this or we can decide to fix it. So I'll show you guys how to fix something like this. So first of all, let's um, merge everything and then create a new stamped layer from it. All right, so everything has been stamped into this final layer. So with that, we'll use the liquify tool. So just come to filter, liquify, and then let's just zoom in a bit. And we are going to push this skin back in a bit. Okay, we have that and then also a bit of the top here goes in. Yeah, that looks good. So we click on OK to get out of Liquify and we are back over here. So this is what we just did. This is before. Now let me zoom in so you can have a good look. So this is before. Take a look at this place. And this is after. Before and after. Et voila. Our image is done. And from here, I would like to apply my melanin skin tone to it. So let's go here. This is the Ghanaian dark skin. Melanie. This is the effect at 100%. I don't want it at 100%. So we can just come to the opacity and then play around with the opacity till we get our desired result. I will choose 15% for this particular image. So this is before and this is now. So once we are okay with this, we can just save it and then export or if you do your exporting in Capture One, once you save it, it goes to Capture One, then you continue with your color grading and other stuff. Now, if you realize, we did not have to sharpen this image because the process we used was non-destructive. So we've been able to retain the texture unlike other methods you use that you have to add uh, you have to sharpen the image or add other things to make the image presentable let me know in the comments if you've learned something new from this tutorial also like this video and share it with people who benefit from it if you haven't subscribed yet kindly do so and hit the bell so you get notified anytime i post a new tutorial i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for watching <music>